Welcome to Course 2, Unit 3, Lesson 2, Warren Buffett's First Rule, which we're going to be discussing vigilant leadership and understanding debt to equity ratio and the current ratio. In this lesson, we have four lesson objectives. The first lesson objective is to define vigilant leadership. The second lesson objective is to understand the debt to equity ratio. The third lesson objective is to understand the current ratio. And the fourth lesson objective is to understand what levels of debt are acceptable. So let's get started. So as you learned in the very short lesson previous to this one, uh, these are the four rules. And the one that we're going to focus on for this lesson is a stock must be managed by vigilant leaders. So what does the word vigilant mean? Uh, the word vigilant means to be carefully observant or attentive on the lookout for possible danger. So if you have a company that's managed by a person who's vigilant, that person's constantly looking for what could go wrong with the business and that person's protecting the business from those potential dangers. So what are the potential dangers when you're managing or running a company? And as an owner of a company, which you, is what you would be as a stockholder, uh, the thing you've got to really watch out for is debt. So that's what we're really going to be talking about in this lesson as we uh, talk about Warren Buffett's first rule. And we have two quick tools that we can use at our disposal for determining a, a acceptable level of debt for a company. The first tool that we can use is the debt to equity ratio. And then the second tool we can use is the current ratio. Those are two very important things that you have to understand whenever you invest. So um, if this isn't something that you've ever done before, uh, you definitely want to take notes during this lesson and uh, learn both of these ratios really well. So we'll start off with the first ratio, which is the debt to equity ratio. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go onto MSN Money and I'm going to pull up two companies to kind of give you uh, a comparison of how these two companies look uh, with their debt to equity ratio. And I'm going to teach you how you can find the different terminology off the balance sheet. So the two companies that we're going to use is Disney and uh, Cirrus XM Radio. So just a quick uh, overview of what the debt to equity ratio is. And I'm going to put this in terms that are pretty easy for you to understand. If you were to add up all of your debts right now, your credit card debt, your car loan, the loan on your home, all of those debts, every single one of them, and you added them up, let's just assume that it came to $20,000 because maybe you're not living in a home, maybe you're renting or whatever the case might be. But let's just say that all your debts come to $20,000. Then if you added up all of your equity, okay, and the easiest way to determine your equity is to, to put it in this uh, situation. Just assume that you died right now. You died today and whenever you died, you're, you're not married, you don't have any kids or anything like that. The money that would be left in your bank account, if a third person would come in and sell all the material things in your home, your computer, your clothes, everything, the value of that would all be added up. Okay, And then you would, you would pay off whatever debts you had. So let's say your car was worth $20,000 and you had $10,000 in debt on the car. So the net on that would be $10,000. That would be the equity. All that money that's left after you add up everything that you have and you subtract out what you would have owed, whatever's left over is the equity. Okay. And what you're doing is you're comparing that debt to the equity. And all you got to do is divide the debts okay, by the equity, the, the equity that's left over. So in that scenario, let's just say that we had $20,000 in debt and that the equity that would be left after you would have died would have been $100,000. Your debt to equity ratio would have been 0 0.20. Okay? Warren Buffett likes to buy companies that have a debt to equity ratio that's less than 0 0.50. So essentially, he wants to buy a company that has, for every dollar of equity, has only 50 cents of debt. Um, as, you, as that number becomes higher, let's say that the company would have $1 of debt and $1 of equity, that ratio would go up to a 1.0. And that's, that's a little higher than what he likes. He likes the, that debt to equity to be a 0.5 or lower. If you don't really understand the term equity, um, I'd recommend that you go back to uh, Course 1, Unit 1, Lesson 3, and we discuss that a little bit more in depth and define that term maybe a little bit better than what I did here. So let's go ahead and go to our two companies that I said that we would assess uh, and look at their debt to equity, which was Disney and the Cirrus XM Radio. Okay, so here I am at msn.com, 
And I'm just using MSN because I kind of know where all the terms are at um, on this site. So I can kind of navigate a little bit faster for you. Um, and what you're going to do is you're just going to come on down until you see this area where you can input a stock quote. And so the first one we're going to look at is Disney. And the ticker for Disney is DIS. So you'll go ahead and put that in and just hit enter. And it brings you to all the information on the Walt Disney Company. Okay, so what we're trying to find is the debt to equity ratio. And the debt to equity ratio they have on the very top page, if you just scroll down, they have the debt to equity ratio right here. And you can see that the debt to equity ratio for Disney is 0.42. And if you remember the rule that Warren Buffett likes to try company likes to buy companies that are below a 0.50, this company fits that criteria. So it's a 0.42. So where is how is that number being calculated? How are they finding that 0.42? And how they're doing it is they're actually pulling that number from the balance sheet. So as you look over here on the left of the screen, you can see that the balance sheet is under your three financial sheets, which we learned about in the very first unit of course one. And so we're going to click on the balance sheet. Now, anytime I look at a balance sheet, I always like to look at the most recent quarter. So in order to do that, um, you have two options up here at the top. You can see you have annual and then you have interim. And so you're going to want to look at the interim because that has the most current information. So you just select that box, which it already is selected for us. And you can see that we're looking at the second quarter of 2012. And when you look at the balance sheet, it's broken down into uh, two major groups. You got the assets section, and then you have the liabilities section. Okay, and then the difference between those two is the equity, which you're going to see right here. So when you take the total assets, which is this number right here, which is that 75, and that number is in millions, so that's 75 billion dollars in assets and total assets, and you subtract your total liabilities, which is 37 billion dollars. When you subtract those two numbers, you get the total equity, which is 38 billion dollars. Okay? So how they're calculating that debt to equity ratio is they're coming onto this balance sheet and they're coming into the liability section, which is right here. You got your liability section. And they're looking for anything right here that has debt. So right here we can see that has debt and the number there is zero. Then you come over here and you have another thing that says debt okay and so that three billion dollars that you you take that and then you're gonna add this total long-term debt of 12 billion okay and you're gonna add up those terms that have debt attached to them in the description there when you add up those terms which in this case is gonna be that 3.4 billion and also the 12.5 billion you add those two numbers up and then you're gonna divide that number by the total equity Okay, so if we're going to do that real shorthand, uh, just by looking at it real fast, that's you got 3.4 plus, which we can just round up to 3.5, and you add 3.5 plus the 12.5, and that's going to give you your 16 uh, flat. You take 16 divided by 38, and that's going to give you your 0.4 and, and some change that we saw with the debt to equity ratio. So. That's what they're doing and that's how they're calculating it. Now, is that something that you actually need to calculate if you're going to quickly go through and assess a company? Probably not. The number that you're seeing on that top level page is, is probably pretty close to what uh, is current. So if you do need to come in and figure it out, that's how you would do it though. Now, there's, there's some other ways that you can look at a debt to equity ratio. Uh, some people like to come in and they would like to use the total liabilities. They would actually like to compare all of the liabilities on here compared to the equity and in this case you'd see it's almost a 1.0 because you got 37 billion compared to 38 billion so that number is just going to be slightly under a 1.0 so that's a little bit of a higher estimate and if you're a more conservative investor that might be the approach that you might want to take instead of just taking the debt uh, terms inside of the current liabilities and the total liabilities so just uh, some different techniques, and that's it's totally up to you how you want to assess your your valuation. And uh, I recommend, you know, obviously a more conservative approach as you're beginning, and as you get a little bit more comfortable, maybe you can uh, ease up on how uh, conservative you are on your approach. So for Disney, we saw that the debt to equity ratio was a 0.42, which we uh, 
you know, can generally say is a pretty conservative amount of debt. And Disney should be able to easily pay those debts at that ratio because they have enough income coming in in order to support it. So let's go ahead and look at the Cirrus satellite radio. In order to do that, we're just going to go up to the top. We're going to type in SIRI, which is the ticker for Cirrus. And we'll go ahead and bring them up. And let's look at their debt to equity ratio. Okay, so we just scroll down like we did for Disney. And we get down to here to the debt to equity ratio, which you can see it's right here. And the debt to equity ratio for Cirrus XM radio is 3.48. Now that number is extremely high. And the easiest way to really understand the ratio is $3.48 is debt for every $1 of equity in the business. Um, and that's how you got to say it. Uh, just say whatever the ratio is, and then it's always over $1 of equity. So um, you can see this company has a lot of debt right now. Um, I would argue that there's a whole lot of risk involved with this company simply because of the debt alone. Um, if I was looking at investing in this business, I would immediately stop. I wouldn't even go any further in order to calculate the intrinsic value because it has way too much debt for me to invest in it. Um, now, that might be uh, way too conservative for your approach, but that's uh, something that you're going to have to come to terms with and come up with on your own. Uh, but for me, I like to look at companies that are well below the 0.5. Um, there's way too many companies out on the stock market right now that have a zero for their debt to equity because they literally have no debt. So why would I go and buy a company like this that has a lot of debt, has a lot of risk, um, whenever I can go out and buy something else that has absolutely no debt and might even have better earnings than this company. So that's the debt to equity ratio. So that's the first tool that we have to assess uh, whether we have vigilant leaders leading these companies. So let's go back and uh, check out our next tool which is the current ratio. Okay, like before, um, we're going to go ahead and use Disney and Cirrus again to assess the current ratio. So what is the current ratio? What this is, is it gives us an idea how, how will the company handle debt in the next 12 months. So when we were looking at the debt to equity ratio in the last scenario, that was just a general overview of all the debt added up and then we were comparing it to the equity that the company has. In this scenario, we're going to look at how much money the company expects to have uh, coming in in the next 12 months and how much they're going to have to pay out in the, in the next 12 months. And when we look at that comparison, we can then determine uh, how much debt potentially is this company going to have to take on if they have to take on any debt at all. So when we look at the current ratio, Warren Buffett likes the current ratio above greater than 1.5. So that's important, you're gonna to wanna to write that down. 1.5 and above is what you're really looking for in a current ratio. So let's go ahead and uh, pull up the companies off of MSN Money. Okay, so here we are back at MSN Money uh, with Walt Disney at the top level page. Um, you just follow the same technique as we used before. You type in DIS up here in order to get to the Walt Disney Company. And we're gonna go back to the, the balance sheet again in order to determine the current ratio. Unfortunately, that current ratio is not listed anywhere on these top level pages. This is something that you're going to have to go to the balance sheet and assess. So I clicked on balance sheet, which was just down on the uh, financials. And when we come to the balance sheet, again, you're going to want to put it on interim and make sure it's there. And when we look at the balance sheet, we have the assets broken down into the two sections. At the top, you have the total current assets, and then you have just total assets. When a company lists something in the total current assets, this means that the company will likely convert whatever that is into cash during the next 12 months. Okay, so this $14 billion in total current assets, that's going to be converted to cash in the next 12 months. And that's going to be a positive. That's what's going to flow into the company. Um, so likewise, when you go down into the liabilities, it's broken down into two sections. It's broken down into your total current liabilities and then just total liabilities. So total current liabilities is what they're going to pay out of the company in the next 12 months. And that is $12 billion, which is lower than the $14 billion that they have flowing into the company. That's a good thing. So. When we talk about the current ratio, all we're doing is we're taking this top number, which is the money flowing in, 
and we're dividing it by the money flowing out in that short term, that 12 months. So if this was 14 billion and this was 14 billion, our current ratio would be a 1.0, meaning all the money flowing in is exactly the same money that's flowing out. So you're not going to see a change in your equity. Okay, that equity, which is just the subtraction of your total assets minus your total liabilities, that's the difference between this. So if this is equal to this, your expectation is that your equity is not going to change in the next 12 months. Now in this scenario, we see that the, the total current assets exceed the total current liabilities. That's good. So if we wanted to figure out what the current ratio is, we'd take 14.5 divided by our 12.7, and that's just a quick way of doing it. You would actually take the full number divided by this full number. So when we take those numbers and we divide them, uh, we get 1.14. Okay, and if you remember, uh, I said Warren Buffett likes to buy companies that have a current ratio above 1.5. So in this case, Walt Disney's current ratio is 1.14, and that's kind of a, a lower figure. It's still in the positive. It's still above the 1.0, which is really your absolute cutoff. You can't be buying companies with a current ratio below 1.0. Um, so it's, it's above the 1.0 mark, but it's not really as high as we'd like to see at the 1.5 level. You, on the stock market right now, you can go out and find companies that have a current ratio over a 2.0 or a 3.0. Um, what you're really looking for is a company that's above 1.5 and, and maybe around the, to the 2.0 range. That's what you're really looking for on a current ratio. But this is still acceptable at 1.14. If you really were um, interested in buying Walt Disney and all the other fundamentals that we're going to talk about in the follow-on lessons checked out, Maybe this is something that you would go ahead and assume the risk on, uh, knowing that it is pretty close to 1.0. So let's go ahead and look at the Cirrus satellite radio. So we're just going to go up to the top. We're going to type in S-I-R-I -I and hit enter. And we're going to come on down to the financial section, and we're going to go ahead and click on the balance sheet. And make sure that you're on interim. Okay, and so when we look at this number, we see that the number is just 1.3 billion and the liabilities for their, their total current liabilities, which is the ones that they're going to have in the next 12 months, is 2.2 billion. So when we take the top number divided by the bottom number, we get a current ratio of 0.597, which we'll just say is 0.6. And that is very bad. That is something that you would want to avoid at all costs because you know right now that because that's below the 1.0, based off of that, they're going to have to take on more debt in the next 12 months because they don't have uh, above a 1.0. So when we're looking at this current ratio, it really tells us a lot about the financial health of this company as we look into the short term in the next 12 months. And for Cirrus, it's pretty low. It's at 0.6, and that's something that you're going to want to avoid. So I might have gone a little quick for you. Um, if that's the case, I strongly encourage you to go back and do a little bit of research on your own with the debt-to-equity ratio and also the current ratio. Those are your two tools to understand how much debt a company has and whether it's, it's at a manageable level or if it's not at a manageable level. And this all falls under our first rule of Warren Buffett, and that is a stock must be managed by vigilant leaders. So use those two tools to your advantage and don't settle for a company that has a lot of debt. So this concludes Course 2, Unit 3, Lesson 2, where we talked about Warren Buffett's first rule. Uh, we talked about the vigilant leadership, the debt to equity ratio, and the current ratio. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson where we talk about Warren Buffett's second rule.